Hi, in this video we're going to be talking about cars that are moving around, traveling around on um, bank turns, and we're going to add some friction into the consideration. Okay, at least eventually we will do that. So um, what I'm talking about is like this car might be going around uh, this embankment, like a bank turn. Maybe they got off the highway and there and there's a um, the, the exit ramp is banked. Okay, maybe not this much, but it's banked. And so um, that helps the car turn. So I want to show you the physics of that. Okay. Now, um, if we looked at it from a different perspective than this, this problem would be quite a bit more difficult. And so this is one of those problems where the perspective that you draw it from actually matters a lot. Let me give you what I, let me give you an example of what I'm talking about there. So like imagine this is the road and let's say it's a flat road right now and I'm going to use a Duracell battery because I don't have a car. Um, the, these are going to be the two headlights of the car and so I don't have wheels on this car but it's going to be moving around in a circle so there are the two headlights and there it's going to be going around in a circle like that. See how it's navigating through a circle. But that's not that's a flat road. But what would happen if we banked it a little bit? So if we bank it, then it's a little easier for it to go in that circle because it's the normal force is helping it go in that circle. Okay. Now, um, if we look at it from this perspective, that's a tough problem to solve. It's much easier to solve it if we look at it if we look at it from this perspective. Let's see, um, like this, where it's coming at us just like the picture below, that, that picture. So here's the bank, and it's driving along like this, going in a circle, like that. Okay, so um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna um, do what I, uh, I'm gonna solve this the way I do every Newton's Law problem. I'm gonna draw a free body diagram. After I draw the free body diagram, I'll break the, all the forces into component vectors and then apply Newton's second law in both the x and y direction. So here goes. Okay, so there's our ramp that's banked. And um, I, instead of drawing the car center of mass a little bit above the road, which is where it really is, I'm gonna draw it right at the, um, right here. You'll see why that matters in a second. It just makes the analysis of the angles a lot easier. And then the other thing I'm going to do is when I draw the mg force, I'm going to make it so big that it goes through the through that triangle. Again, it just makes looking at all the forces, the angles, a little easier analyzing them. Okay, so that's mg, and we got a normal force like that. And those are the only forces, because, um, because here's the problem that I'm trying to solve. How fast must a car travel on a 20 degree frictionless bank turn if it's to drive in a horizontal circle of 30 meters without any friction? Okay, because it's a frictionless bank turn. So how fast, what's the, what's the speed that will allow it to go in a circular motion without any friction? All right, so... Uh, let's let me put in a coordinate system. Now I'm doing a coordinate system like this. Maybe you're used to having um, these axes so that um, one of them goes down the inclined plane. That's what we do usually with inclined planes, but um, not with this one because this car is accelerating toward the center of the circle. It's actually going. This is the center of the circle, like over here somewhere. Not down here, but over here somewhere. This car is going in a like a horizontal circle. And so um, because it's accelerating that way, that's the way I'm going to make one of the axes. If I did uh, slant these axes like you normally do with an inclined plane, what would happen is you'd have an acceleration in both the x and the y direction, and that would just get um, more difficult with the math. Okay, so there you have it. Now this is 20 degrees. That means that this is the complement of it because this is a right angle. So this is 70 degrees. So now we're back to 20 degrees because this is a right angle. 
And then um, this is 70 degrees because this is a right angle. It's a normal force, normal force. So it's this is 70 degrees. So now this is going to be 20 degrees again because that's a right angle. Okay. So somehow get these angles in there. And then, um, and so th those are all the forces. I'm going to break these forces into X and Y components. Now the MG is already in the Y direction, all in the Y direction. But FN is, I've got some in this direction and some in this direction. So I'm going to say this is FN, Y, and FN, X. Okay, now I'm ready to apply Newton's second law in both directions. So I'm going to uh, make two columns, an X and a Y column. And so um, here's X and Y. So the acceleration in the X direction is equal to the net force in the X direction all over the mass and the acceleration in the y direction is equal to the net force in the y direction all over the mass. The reason I'm going to solve these in parallel is because um, for for problems like these and a lot of problems actually um, you're, you're going to be using some information you get from X for Y or vice versa. So one or the other, you'll go back and forth. And so it's nice to have them being developed in parallel fashion. Okay, so in the X direction, the acceleration is actually V squared over R because it's going in a circle. And so um, that's the acceleration. And then the net force, there's only one force that's in the X direction. It's, it's this force. And you see how um, that's going to be Fn times the sine of 20 because it's the opposite side. So I'm going to say um, Fn sine of 20. twenty degrees all over mass. Now I don't know what the Fn is, but that's okay because um, I'm going to get that from the y direction. Okay now in the y direction, um, the acceleration is zero because the, the car is not accelerating upward or downward. It's just going in a horizontal plane. And so um, this is zero. So then F net in the Y direction must be zero. Well, if that's the case, then um, this force must be the same magnitude as that force. Mg must be the same as Fn sub Y. Okay, so let's see how that works mathematically then. Mg is equal to Fn times the cosine of 20 degrees since it's the adjacent side it's the cosine of 20 degrees okay now I'm gonna solve this for FN and put it in there substitute it in there so FN is equal to um, mg over the cosine of 20 degrees and then I'm going to take this and I'm going to put it into there. So here goes V squared over R is equal to Fn, so Mg over the cosine of 20 degrees. That's the normal force times the sine of 20 degrees. That's that, all over the mass. Also, the mass cancels. Apparently, it doesn't matter how massive the car is. And so, um, now just solving for V, it looks like V is equal to, bring that up a little bit, it's going to be equal to the square root of um, Rg. And sine of, sine of 20 over cosine of 20 is tangent of 20. And so um, if I put in the numbers for this problem, I think we said the radius was 30 meters. And G is about 9.8 meters per second squared. 
and then times the tangent of 20 degrees. You'll get that V, when you do this math, it's about 10.34 meters per second. That's with no friction. That's the perfect speed in order to go around that bank turn. If you go at that speed, you don't need any friction. You can hit a patch of ice or maybe some oil, an oil slick, and it doesn't matter. It's going to go around at that, at that speed. It's going to be able to go around in a circle. Okay, now, what happens, though, if you go, like, at 20 meters per second or 30 meters per second? Then you're going to need some friction. And so let's take a look at that, that problem. Okay, a car that's going um, too fast is going to um, have this happen to its tires. If it's going too fast, then the car is going to need more centripetal force than the normal force can provide. And so what will happen is there'll be some friction, like this car is going so fast that look at how the tires deform. And so it, what's, you might think of it as the car is going to slide up the inclined plane. It's actually that the car is going to go in a tangent to the circle, which is going to bring it further up the embankment. But that's so because it's going in a tangent to a circle. And so what will happen is the frictional force will push it, will push it down the inclined plane, and the tires will deform this way. If, for some reason, you're going too slow, let's say you're exiting a highway and you're and you're almost in dead stop traffic it's rush hour or something and you hit a patch of ice and you're on a ramp well then what's going to happen is you'll slide down the incline you're going to actually slide down the incline maybe into the center there and so um, but if there's friction friction will hold you up and so the tires will deform this way so going too slow the tires will deform this way the force friction will be will be up the incline plane you see how the the uh, tires are being pushed by the road up the inclined plane, which gives you that deformation. Whereas this, it's going down the inclined plane. The force friction is going down the inclined plane. Okay, so here's the question. The question that we're going to solve is, um, if mu s is 0.30, the, the coefficient of static friction is 0.30, what's the maximum speed the car can travel in this 30 meter radius circle? How fast, what's the fastest it can travel before it will start to skid out or slide out? Okay, now we're using, we're using uh, mu s, the static force of friction. You might be thinking, well, I thought the car is moving, so why aren't we using kinetic force of friction? And um, actually the static force of friction is a little better to use because the, the rubber of the tire and the road they're not moving relative to each other there unless it's sliding if the if the tire starts to slide then you then you have to use kinetic force friction but otherwise mu s is, a, is better to use okay so um going with that then let's draw the free body diagram and apply newton's second law in both directions so it's going to look like this this what this is what the math looks like So there's our ramp. Again, I'll put my center of mass right on the ramp and I'll draw the force of gravity through the triangle. And we got a normal force that's going to be, you're going really fast so that normal force may grow. And so that's the normal force. And, um, and then you got to force friction down the inclined plane. force of static friction down the inclined plane. Uh, F, F sub S or something like that down the inclined plane. Okay, so I'm going to break this into components. So let me first put in a coordinate system. That's my Y. My X will be in the direction that it's accelerating toward the center of the circle. And so um, now let me break this into components. So we got... Um, this is going to be Fn sub x, or y rather, and this is Fn sub x up here. 
and then breaking this into components. I can go this way and over or this way and over. I'm going to go this way just to either way is fine. Okay, so this is fs sub x and fs sub y. Okay, so um, let me do a play-by-play -play of what's happening then here before I get into all, all the math. And that is that in the um, y direction, we have three forces. This one, mg, the normal force in the y direction is up, and the force of static friction is down. And so because of that, um, these two right here, the, this one and this one, have to add up to give you that. They have to add up to that. This plus this equals that because it's not accelerating up or down. Now in the x direction, the net force is just this one plus this one then. Okay, that's your net force. That's your centripetal force. That's what's supplying the force, the, the centripetal force. Okay, so let's do the angles. We got 20 degrees here. So then this is 70 degrees. So this is 20 degrees. So this is 70 degrees, and then this is 20 degrees. Okay, let's throw this into the, some equations and get the answer for what we're, what we're after is, is um, what's the fastest it can go and still maintain that circle. So here goes. Going to make a column of x and y. And say A in the x direction is equal to the net force in the x direction all over the mass. And the A in the y direction is equal to the net force in the y direction all over the mass. Okay, so for this one, um, the acceleration again is V squared over R because it's going in a circle. Now the net force is uh, it's both of these, both of these. So uh, this one and that one. So this would be Fs times the cosine of 20. See how that's the adjacent side? And this would be Fn um, times the sine of 20. Okay, so I'm going to just write that down as the net force. So the net force is the normal force times the sine of 20, 20 degrees, plus Fn, so that would be um, Fs, the force of static friction, times the cosine of 20. All over the mass. Okay. Cosine of 20, and this would be the sine of 20. Okay, so then um, I'm going to do the same thing with this now. So the acceleration in the y direction is zero. So that means the net force in the y direction must be zero. So I'm going to say that mg plus um, the force of static friction in the y direction. So that would be the force of static friction, and it's going to be sine of 20. That has to equal, see why I'm using sine of 20, because it's, it's this one, so this one and this one, that's sine of 20, but I'll use cosine for the other one, so it's going to be, that's equal to Fn times the cosine of 20 degrees. All right, so, um, so you see this gets a little messy here. Um, the last thing I have to do is I have to substitute in for the force of static friction. I'm going to substitute in, that's not the last thing, but it's close to the last thing. I'm going to substitute in uh, mu s times the normal force. Okay, now that needs a little bit of an explanation, so come on up here and let me explain. So the force of static friction is less than or equal to mu s times the normal force. Okay, so it's less than or equal to, but I'm going to substitute. I'm going to say that when you're maxing out, in other words, you're going the fastest you can go, 
then you're maxing out the force of static friction, then it's equal to mu s times the normal force. So that's why I'm going to sub in mu s times the normal force for those. Okay, so here it goes. Uh, I'm going to say v squared all over r is equal to fn times the sine of 20 degrees plus mu s times fn cosine of 20 degrees all over the mass. Okay, on this one I'm going to say mg plus mu s times fn sine of 20 equals fn times the cosine of 20. I'm running out of space here. Uh, cosine of 20. Uh, cosine of 20 degrees. Perfect, perfect. Okay, that's fn cosine times the cosine of 20 degrees. All right, so um, here's what I'm going to do to solve this then. I'm going to... Um, take the more simple of the two equations. I think this one's slightly more simple. And I'm going to solve it for Fn, because that's an unknown that I, I just don't know what that is. So I'm going to solve this for Fn. And then I'm going to put that into the Fn's here. And then I will only have one unknown at that point. Okay. Now to solve this for Fn, maybe I'll um, bring the other term with Fn on the other side and um, factor out an Fn so it will look something like this. Um, so Mg is equal to Fn cosine of 20 degrees minus mu static Fn sine of 20 degrees. Ah, I'm running out of space on my paper right too big. Okay, so now I'm going to factor out an Fn there and bring all that other stuff underneath. So I get Fn is equal to um, Mg all over this stuff. So it's going to be um, cosine of 20 degrees minus um, mu s sine of 20 degrees. Okay, now I, I know all this stuff except for M. Let's say I don't know M. That's okay. When I put it in here, that this M will cancel with that M. So when I do all this, and then I, I'm going to take this guy, this guy actually, and I might, I might actually do the math, like plug that stuff into my calculator, because that's just going to be a number, and I'll just times M, and I'll plug it into there and to there and then um, I'm only going to have one unknown I'm going to know what I'm just not going to know what V is because the M's are going to cancel and so um, just to make this a little shorter here I'm going to just tell you when I do all that I'm going to get 14.8 meters per second so see how that's a little faster that's a little faster than I was go the than the original speed of 10.34. So you get 14.8 if you bank it at if you bank it at 20 degrees and your coefficient of friction is 0.3.3. I think race cars are like might be you know like 0.9. So they can go a lot faster, and uh, but they don't bank them as much. They they it, they probably will rely on friction more and the normal force less. All right, that's all I had to tell you. Thanks. Bye.